Hello, I'm Lewis and this is DIY Machines, the channel where I show you step by step how to create your own 3D printable projects. I recently published a video on how to create your own desktop neon effect signs. Now, I was amazed at just how popular this project has become and although I created and shared several different shapes and styles already for you to print, plenty of people have asked on how they can create their own designs. In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn your own idea into a fully 3D printed sign. This video has been sponsored by PCBWay. I'll tell you some more about them later on. As I've already mentioned, we're going to be drawing a new shape of your own design to work with the rest of the electronics which I designed in my previous video. If you've not seen that one yet, then you can find a link to the video up here and down in this video's description. You'll find that it describes in detail, step by step, how you can assemble the rest of your project once you've drawn your own shape out. You'll also find links for the electronic parts themselves and an optional, but super convenient, kit of everything you'll need in my internationally shipping Etsy shop. Now we're going to draw your design using Autodesk's Fusion 360. There is a free version available for personal use which you can download following the links below. After you have finished installing Fusion 360, you can then download the project file that I've created for this project. <laughs> it uh, contains the foot of the neon shape, that's this part here, which interfaces with the rest of the stand like so. After you've downloaded the starter file for this project, we'll need to upload it into Fusion 360. To do this, head to the File tab, press Upload, Find the file on your computer where you downloaded it. And then press upload. This will take just a moment. Once the upload is complete, you can go ahead and open the file. Open the tab on the side and double click it. Now, if you're using the free personal version of Fusion 360, before you can edit this file, you'll need to press the little banner image here at the top. Make editable, editable, <laughs> Ed you get the point. <laughs> so we'll need to choose the shape which you're gonna turn into your sign next. We're gonna use a trick and take a image into Fusion 360 and trace it. I suggest that you use your phone to take a photo of an object or item, perhaps something you hold incredibly near and dear and just couldn't imagine life without. Or draw something on a piece of paper, which is what I'm going to do. Sorry, David. I want to create a light bulb. Now, here's a little trick to ensure you don't draw something bigger than you can print. Take your piece of paper over to the print bed on your printer and draw it on there. Now, you should also add two dots onto your drawing 10 centimeters apart. We'll use this in Fusion 360 to ensure that we set the scale correctly. Send a copy of this photo to your computer and then we can dive back into Fusion 360. So we're going to insert an image of our drawing or object and use it as what's called a canvas in Fusion 360. This will allow us to use the sketch tool to trace the outline directly in the software. Don't worry if your hand drawing isn't particularly geometrically aligned, we can tweak this in the software a little bit later. So before we get going, uh, we need to name the part that we already have on our screen. So the part that you see here, I'm going to call it the foot from now on, okay? So to add the canvas, you need to spin the foot around and select the face on the rear. And then we can go ahead and choose insert and canvas from the menu bar at the top. You'll then need to find the image which you have already sent to your computer. Now, it's quite small at the moment, so we'll use this handle here to enlarge it. Don't worry about the size at the moment, we just need to make it large enough to work with. You'll also want to press horizontal flip 
This makes the image the same direction as we photographed it. Press OK. So if you remember, we drew two dots earlier, 10 centimeters apart. So to use those, right click your image here under the canvas tab and press calibrate. You can then click as close as you can to our two dots in the image and type in a distance, in this case, 100 millimeters or 10 centimeters. And our drawing will be resized. Now that we know the image is the correct size, we'll go back and edit the canvas so we can straighten it up and move it to a better location just above our foot. To do this, right click again on your canvas and select edit canvas. I'm just I'm going to spin mine around to the right hand side, which is the front. Grab this piece here and move it just above. I'm also going to straighten it slightly. Maybe about minus four, minus three, minus three degrees. I will just move that over a little bit more. Perfect. So there we go. You have your image for reference. Let's start drawing your shape. To do this, spin the model around and select the rear face of our foot again. We can then go to create and sketch. As we begin to draw the shape, we're going to draw the center line of where the LEDs are going to go. And then we'll tell Fusion 360 to make a thicker, wider line following that contour. So I'm going to start with the line tool here and begin tracing my shape. Now, every time I click, I'm going to get a straight line. But if I go back a few here, if you want to curve, press and hold your mouse button as you move the tool. Again, clicking gets your straight line, press and hold to get a curve. Just carrying along your model. The line tool and its limited curving ability is perfect for the beginning of my shape. But as we get to the top side of the light bulb, the curves get a little bit more interesting. So we can use the curvier and not so catchy fit point spline tool, which will do a much better job of this. That's this one here. I can continue the same line and make points where the curve changes direction of severity. I can then go back and grab the handles of these nodes to adjust the direction and influence of each point along the curve. You've probably noticed that I'm not exactly following my hand-drawn shape perfectly well. And that's just because, as I say, it's a hand-drawn shape. I want this to be a more geometrically constrained shape. So I'm actually going to spend a couple of minutes deleting the second half of the light bulb and then using the mirror feature in Fusion 360 to ensure that the bulb is symmetric across its center. You can press this little eye icon next to your canvas to hide it and give you some better visibility. So our LED flex strips, which will go inside our sign, are approximately five millimeters in thickness. We're going to add a one millimeter wall either side of this to hold it in place. So we're gonna need a total thickness of seven millimeters. Because of this, we need to ensure that none of our lines, particularly these ones here going back and forth at the bottom of my light bulb, are any closer than seven and a half millimeters. To do that, we'll use the dimension tool. Now 
and there's my finished shape. So to extrude our sketch into a solid, we'll use the extrude command. You find it here in the create menu, or you can use the shortcut E on your keyboard. We're going to choose a fin extrude, select your sketch, set the distance to minus 13 millimeters, the wall thickness to seven, and the wall location to center. Also, check that operation is a new body. We can create the channel for the LED strip using Fusion's shell command. Go modify and shell. Select the front face of your shape and an inside thickness of just one millimeter. To help improve the rigidity of our shape, we'll add an additional two millimeters to the thickness at the rear. Select the extrude command or press E on your keyboard. Press the rear face of your shape and set a distance, ooh, set a distance of, come on, <laughs> two millimeters. There we go. Now my light bulb design will just use one single color of LED flex strip. If you're going to be using more than one, such as in this pineapple, then we can add a channel underneath the LED strips to help conceal any additional power wires which you might choose to add. For this, add a new sketch to the back face of your LED strip. Use the offset command to take the edges around the inside and offset them by one and a half millimeters. You might need to use the flip command to move the lines in or outside of your drawing. We want them inside. We can then use the extrude command again, select our new narrow channel and remove one and a half millimeters of material. To connect this foot here to the rest of your shape, we'll add some additional material to act as a backboard of sorts. Create a sketch on the rear face of your foot. And this time we'll use the project tool to create two sketches of the two existing shapes. You can then use the same line and fit point spline tools as earlier to draw a backboard to help connect everything together. Now, I could get away with simply connecting these two here. If I make this section here solid, the two will be connected, but I want to ensure it stands quite sturdy. So I'm going to continue my connection to the top. We can then extrude the closed regions that we want to use as a backboard. We'll type a extrusion of minus one and a half millimeters as we want our extrusion to go into the other components. You can see it's all starting to take <laughs> shape. <laughs> That's awful. Now we'll create a path for our wires to go from the base of our electronics into the LED shape itself. We can do this by selecting the foot using the extrude command, changing the extent type to object, and then selecting the underside of our shape. Then to bore a hole through this tunnel, we'll select the inside of the tunnel here again, go to extrude, extend to object. And this time we need to select the LED channels all here. Zoom in a bit more. Oop, there it is. Operation should automatically change to cut and press OK. And there's our tunnel for the LED wires. The next thing we need to do is export your design and 3D print it. To export it from Fusion to 360, 
go to your side menu, open up the bodies, and then right click on body one and save as mesh. You should be able to export your design as an STL, open this in your slicing software, and then send it to your 3D printer. I printed mine in 3D Jake's Ultra Satin Gold PLA filament. Now you simply need to follow the instructions from my previous video to wire everything together. <laughs> Whilst I'm busy building the electronics over there, a quick and grateful thank you goes to PCBWay, whose PCBs have made creating and assembling the electronics for this project significantly easier. You'll find a link to this project's page on their website down below, where you'll also find a link to my Patreon page, which is where this lovely list of super awesome and lovely people went to support this project and future projects. If you can and would like to consider supporting the channel, I would be very grateful. Now, I really enjoy seeing what you create and how you adapt my projects for your own uses. If you'd like to, please go ahead and share a photo of your design on printables.com, links down below. Thank you so much for watching another one of these project videos. If you've enjoyed it, please consider subscribing and sharing this video with anyone else you think might enjoy it. It really does help me out. Until the next project, do some good and ciao for now.